It's an honor for me to speak to you on behalf of the government of Rwanda at this international conference in the framework of the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Auschwitz, Birkenau, and the 25th commemoration of the genocide against the Tutsi. <clears throat> I would like to thank the organizing committee who actively decided to host this conference in Kigali. Particularly, I would like to thank uh, B. Nye B. Rith International for continuing throughout the last uh, 176 years in all around the world to advocate for those who have suffered atrocity and continue to face trauma today. <clears throat> thank you to AGES Trust and its Chief Executive Officer, Dr. James Smith, for consistently working to prevent genocide and mass atrocity, as well as combating identity-based violence through the power of education. We recognize AGES Trust's dedicated efforts in Rwanda since 2004 to eradicate genocide ideology, promote peace and stability in our communities. Today, we've come together to recognize and commemorate the lives of the victims of the Holocaust, the genocide against the Tutsi, and all other mass atrocity that has taken place in our world. Our gathering here reinforces our international commitment to memorialize discriminatory violence and combat injustice and inequality. By addressing issues of indoctrination, fanaticism, and violence, we strive to understand the power of language and ideology and work to ensure that such atrocities never occur again. Rwanda, like Israel, has endured genocide and is, and is determined that the past should never be forgotten. In remembering the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, we have placed emphasis on educating our young generations, sharing the history of our country, however terrible it may be, in order to convey the significance of unity and peace. In particular, we are showing children and young adults that dignity, the Kinyarwanda Agachiro, is essential to these goals. With personal respect and dignity, we are able to respect other people and, as a result, never revert to the inhumane treatment that was our past. Educating the world and its young people about the Holocaust in the same way is of paramount importance to ensure that other countries learn from you and your experiences. His Excellency Paul Kagame, President of the Republic, reflected this sentiment by saying that we cannot turn the clock back, nor can we undo the harm caused, but we have the power to determine the future and to ensure that what happened never happens again. Education is the key to achieving this. We are united by a common vision to fight anti-Semitism, genocide ideology, and all forms of genocide denial because we know the high cost and the terrible consequences if they are not addressed. Targeting groups, inequality, and discrimination should not be tolerated in any state on any continent. We, Rwanda and Israel, are in a unique position to remember the victims of our traumatic past and use this memory and legacy to fight these problems with courage and determination. <clears throat> that said, it is not our duty alone to carry this responsibility. Leaders all over the world should support and embody our mission for the good of their people 
and in acknowledgement of their international responsibility as ratified in UN conventions such as the 1948 Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide. On the 26th of January 2018, the United Nations General Assembly amended the 2003 resolution, which had inaccurately omitted the Tutsi as the target group of the 1994 genocide that happened here. Additionally, to the UN Security Council Resolution 2150, any denial of any internationally recognized genocide is condemned without reservation, and all states are called upon to develop educational programs that will inform and inculcate future generations on the atrocities and consequences of such violence. Furthermore, the UN Security Council resolution encourages all states to cooperate in investigating and prosecuting any and all perpetrators of genocide against the Tutsi. Today, we repeat our request to all countries to prosecute or extradite those who are subjects of international arrest warrants established by the International Residue Mechanism for Criminal Tribunals or the Rwandan National Public Prosecution Authority. I wish to thank Israel for co-sponsoring this decision and all nations who supported this important correction for historical clarity. Meeting our international responsibility means strengthening and preserving memorialization and recommitting to teaching, researching, and documenting our collective past. Days such as this are opportunities to demonstrate international support for advocacy and responsibility to act upon injustice. On the anniversary of the liberation of the Auschwitz Birkenau concentration and extermination camp and the 25th commemoration of the genocide against the Tutsi, we pay tribute to all victims of genocide and horror and honor them with a pledge of ongoing collective remembrance. We also share the instrumental vision of overcoming the trauma endured and looking to the future with strength and determination. Looking after our own people by striving towards a harmonious and successful future cannot be done without remembering those we have lost and supporting those who continue to grapple with the past. Rwanda faced extreme hardship post-1994 genocide against the Tutsi. Our process of recovery and reconciliation has been long but we, Rwandans, are dedicated to accomplishing it. Over the past two decades, we have implemented a number of social and urban policy initiatives in order to ensure that genocide survivors reach their full potential like everyone else. We are proud of the initiatives and resources available to all survivors in order to aid them into transitioning back into society and adapting to our quickly developing nation. We have then come together as Rwandans, healed together, grown together, strengthened each other together, and are now building a new country together. By mobilizing the community to learn from and uplift each other, we are sending a strong message to perpetrators and bystanders locally and internationally. Together, we say we are strong, we are not alone, and we will not leave anyone behind. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today and for your kind attention. I thank you.